Hello class, this is Mr. Hart, and in this podcast we want to finish up the topic on chaos theory and we want to answer the question of what is a chaotic system. And before you watch this podcast, make sure you go back and watch the one on advanced mechanics because in that video we described how upper level physics equations can be described using computers, right? Differential equations sometimes don't have analytical solutions, okay? So how does that relate to chaos theory? Well, it comes in our definition of what a chaotic system is. And this is our definition, okay? So a chaotic system or a system that behaves chaotically, as you would say, is when you have the motion of a set of objects that you can describe using a set of differential equations, okay? But they cannot be represented analytically. Also, the motion is extremely sensitive to the initial setup of the system. Okay, so this is where a lot of people get confused about chaos theory when it's just used in Hollywood and things like that and they don't understand what it means. Okay, we can predict a chaotic system. Okay, a chaotic system is one that has a set of differential equations that does represent it. Okay, however, we can't solve those differential equations to give us any type of algebraic answer. We can't just plug in a number and get a result. We need to use the computer to go step by step to solve this problem. Okay. And then to add or to make things worse, you could say, you also have to be very careful with your initial setup of the system or your initial measurements because it's very sensitive to those measurements. Okay. If you're off on how on the initial position and velocity of all the objects or something like that, then your results aren't accurate. Okay. So like for example, think about like the weather. Okay. If you're trying to predict the weather, it's a chaotic system. Okay, we can predict what the weather is going to be. Okay, you have probably seen a 10-day forecast or even just a one-day forecast or something like that, right? And usually the next day forecast is usually pretty good. The weatherman says it's going to, you know, be sunny tomorrow. Usually that's a pretty accurate description. Okay, but if he says, okay, 10 days down the road, it's going to be sunny, then he's probably wrong and it's going to be rain, as you know from experience. Okay, and the reason is it's because it's chaotic. We have to use the computer based on our initial setup of what we measure for what the weather is like that day. Then we have to use the computer to go step by step. Well, what will be tomorrow? What will be the next day? But the further and further along we predict, the more inaccurate our prediction is going to be. Okay, because again, it's very sensitive to that initial setup. Okay. So let's look at a, at a couple of other ways we can describe chaos theory. There's been a lot of people that have described it in the past. Okay. Um, Here's a common way people have said it. A lot of people like to reference what they call the butterfly effect, this idea that it's very sensitive to these initial conditions. Okay, So for the weather, for example, um, it has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can ultimately cause a typhoon halfway around the world. Okay, Now, that's obviously not true, Okay, but the idea is that even these small changes to the setup of any chaotic system lead to an entirely different behavior in the long run. Okay, So think about the weather. Think about all the different things you'd have to measure to predict the weather Okay, on any given day. You'd have to know exactly what the you know air pressure was in every single location on Earth. You'd have to know what the temperature was going to be based on that. You know, There's so many places you would have to be able to measure to get it perfectly, right? So even these small things that you're not accounting for, butterflies, wings, right, and other things like that can change what the forecast looks like 10 days down the road, and you sometimes can't account for that, okay? And so that's why it appears to be chaotic, or that's why we call it chaotic. It's not because we can't predict it. Our predictions are usually pretty accurate based on what we do have, but the longer we run the prediction, the more inaccurate we are, okay? Another person that was able to describe this really well was uh, Edward Lorenz. Okay, and he described it like this. Okay, um, he said basically chaos theory is when the present determines the future, but the approximate present does not approximately present the future or determine the future. So again, let's go back to the weather analogy, right? If you could determine every single air particle's position and velocity, right? then you know exactly what the present is and you could determine the future forever, right? You could say, we know exactly how every single air particle is moving. We can use all these differential equations and these computers to represent it. You need a 
heck of a lot of computers to uh, analyze that. But the point is, if you could get it, if you could get that much information about the system, then you can determine the future indefinitely. You would know exactly how the weather's going to behave forever and ever. But again, we can't get all those measurements. So we can only approximate the present. So that means our, our computations are going to break down eventually, and we won't be able to approximately determine the future. Okay? It only works for a certain amount of time before it starts to break down. The longer and longer your prediction is, the further out it is, the more it breaks down, the more it doesn't approximate the future. Okay? So again, uh, the reason I'm doing this whole video series is because I want people to understand you can predict chaotic systems. They're not something that's just weird and bizarre that has no you know, rhyme or reason to it. Okay? It does have a behavior that we can understand and predict we just have to be very sensitive with the measurements in order to get good results. Okay. Um, let me give you kind of a graphical visualization of chaos theory as well. Okay. Um, let's say we have a chaotic system, and this is its actual behavior. Okay. How the system is going to behave. Okay. This could be the motion of an object. Let's say it's moving up and down, maybe like a, a chaotic spring or something like that. Okay. Now, let's say we're trying to model this behavior on the computer. Okay, we use a differential equation and we find that it's chaotic and we're trying to use a computer to represent it. Okay, how close we can get to this initial measurement of where it's exactly it's at and its velocity and acceleration, get all these measurements, okay, determines how well we predict it in the future. So let's say our initial um, prediction is like two decimal places accurate, okay? So this is supposed to be exactly at zero and we say it's like 0 0.01. So at the second decimal place, we're off, okay? Then we could imagine, if we put that in the computer, this actually isn't a chaotic system, but just for visualization, if we put that in a computer, okay, we have a two decimal prediction, then it would predict the behavior for a short amount of time, but then it eventually starts to break off and it doesn't approximate the answer very well. Okay. If we go three decimal places, we'd be able to predict the outcome for longer. Okay, but then again, after three decimal places, it's going to break down eventually, and then it's going to go way off from the actual behavior of the system. Okay. If we get could get four decimal places of accuracy down, okay, then it will predict the behavior for quite a long time, and then again, it'll eventually break off, and it's not going to be able to predict the system very well. Okay. But that's how chaos is. And it's not because our computers are bad or anything. It's because of the nature of the system. Because there's so many factors involved or it's uh, behaving in such a way that any small change in that initial setup is going to change how it behaves drastically. Okay? And so we have to be very precise with our measurements and be able to predict any type of chaotic system. Okay? All right, so hopefully this is kind of making sense. Let's go through some examples of what chaotic systems look like, what motions or behaviors we have to be very precise to actually predict. Okay, so the first one we talked about already is weather, right? Weather, you have to be very accurate with those initial measurements as best you can to be able to forecast it in any way, right? The more accurate with the initial measurements, the better the predictions will be, okay? But even with the best of predictions, or sorry, the best of measurements, we can't predict further than like 10 days down, right? Then it just starts to break down. We have no idea what it's going to look like by then, okay? Another interesting uh, chaotic system is actually a w double pendulum, okay? So if you have a pendulum, it's normal behavior. We can actually measure that in physics, right? Intro to physics. But a double pendulum is a pendulum connected to a pendulum, okay? And these actually have very strange behaviors when they're connected. Let me actually pull this up so you can see it. Okay, so this is actually a double pendulum. Okay, and you can see that its behavior is quite bizarre. Okay, how it will, the second pendulum will gain momentum and then lose it, and it's very interesting behavior to say the least, right? But this is chaotic. Now again, we can predict this motion. We use differential equations to represent it, but it doesn't have an analytical solution. So we just have to be very precise with where the pendulums are placed to start with, how much gravity is on them, and things like that. And if we're precise with that, then we can predict this system. Okay? Even as strange as it looks, it does have an answer, and we can find it. Okay? But again, 
We have to be very careful with those measurements to get it right. Okay? So that's a very common example of a chaotic system. Another one is one you actually probably have seen at the grocery store before or at a toy shop or something like that, is these uh, magnetic pendulums. Okay? I recommend just looking up um, this video on YouTube or just search chaotic system magnetic pendulum. Okay, it's really cool how it shows, how it ends up in different places. But you just have a pendulum that has a magnet on it and it just kind of swings back and forth between these magnets. And again, slight changes in where you start, slight changes with the velocity you push it with can lead in a totally different behavior of the system. Okay. And then the last one is more of a finance one, but a great example is the stock market. Okay. The stock market has tons of chaos related to it. And a lot of people lose money or get money based on the stock market, right? But uh, again, it's something that can be predicted, usually only in short amount of time, okay? But it is predictable in nature. It's just chaotic. You just have to be very, you know, careful about the initial conditions you start with, okay? And make sure you measure them very accurately, and then you can predict it. But the further down you get, if you're not accurate, then it's harder to predict how it's going to behave, okay? But there you go. Hopefully that gives you kind of a better understanding of what chaos is. And again, I can't say it enough. Just make sure you understand it is something that you can predict. It is predictable, but it's just harder to get those initial measurements right in order to make sure that our predictions are accurate. Okay? But uh, just make sure you do the uh, assignment on the website, and hopefully that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.